Turning now to your community focus with Congress looking to potentially ban TikTok in the states. What does that mean for users of the app? Here to break down what you need to know, attorney and professor Brian Lamoureux. Thanks so much for being here. My pleasure, Kim. So let's start here, Brian. Can Congress legally prohibit Americans from using TikTok? Well, that reminds me of the expression, where does an elephant, uh, where can an elephant sit? An elephant can sit wherever it wants. And Congress is the ultimate lawmaking authority. And uh, the phrase, it takes an act of Congress is there for a reason. And uh, unless Congress did something stupid in this bill, which I read and I, it looks on its face that it's defensible because it stays away from regulating speech, which would be a little more problematic. And it's instead focused more on the structural or the corporate sides of TikTok, which uh, government has a very strong and storied history in regulating uh, businesses over the years. Yeah, so is there though a precedent for this? I mean, we're talking about social media. I knew it's I know it's a relatively new territory um, in you know the grand scheme of things. You talk about regulating businesses. Is there a precedent for the lawmakers saying you can't go onto this specific website or access this specific app? Well, while that's the outcome that will happen, which is the platform being removed from the American marketplace, the bill is actually aimed at something different. It's aimed at uh, giving ByteDance or giving TikTok a choice. You can either divest from the uh, communi uh, the Chinese Communist Party CCP ownership, uh, or you can sell yourself, uh, and it's your choice. If not, you're gonna be in violation of the law. So it's really not Congress necessarily directly impacting what websites we can visit or what apps we could use. As a practical matter, it would have that effect for sure. Uh, but it, there is no precedent for this, right? There's 150 plus million users of the app. It is uh, part of the fabric of our internet in terms of how people communicate on it. So there's certainly no precedent, but there's lots of precedent for Congress passing laws that requires companies to do X, Y, or Z or face consequences. And that's the terminology that DC is uh, framing it as, which is merely the regulation of a corporate entity, not necessarily aimed at users or a particular platform or technology. Very interesting. Um, while we have you, I wanted to ask you about something that the Supreme Court is considering right now that also has to do with these major social media platforms. They're taking a look at a case that would sort of change how these companies operate by deciding whether it's legal for them to ban certain content like they're able to do now, essentially deciding whether they're considered a publisher or a common carrier. Can you break down what this means and how it would impact us users? Sure, there are two pending cases in the Supreme Court, one from Texas, one in Florida, which are somewhat the same, but they're, the, the differences are not important for this purpose. Uh, the interesting thing about those laws that are being challenged is that while it's true that they are aimed at regulating uh, how these tech companies and how these social media platforms uh, handle content, remove content, they go a step further, which is the first of its kind. They actually require disclosure to the users about what happened to their content, why it was removed, why it was downregulated, and that is breaking new ground. Those are the first laws in our history during the social media era that uh, require these companies to not only uh, disclose what they've done, but also explain the reasons behind it. So it's intended primarily to create some transparency uh, on platforms, which for many users have been very black box in terms of down throttling of content or uh, shadow banning or uh, videos that should have gone viral that got 100 views, which uh, are, I'm sure are very, very frustrating on both sides of, of the political spectrum. Certainly a lot to keep track of when it comes to everything that's available at our fingertips these days. All right, Attorney Brian Lamoureux, thanks so much for joining us here at 4. You're welcome, Kim.